Yes, it was pretty pretty horrible walking through the streets of Edinburgh in particular in recent days. Uh, it's the it's the annual festival season that's been going going on where the city is really besieged by visitors. So it's the worst possible time from the perspective of residents and visitors for this to be happening. The rubbish really has piled up. Some of the big beauty spots of the, the city have looked pretty terrible in, in recent days. And it's not just Edinburgh. The, while that action has finished for now in Edinburgh, in other cities it's continuing. It comes to an end for a, for a period tomorrow, but there's more action on the way next week. And it's not just going to be bins that are affected. It's also going to be schools. There's going to be mass school closures because the unions are lining up more more strike action. And you talk about that strike action. That is because I assume there's been no movement or little movement on kind of pay and conditions. Uh, we're looking at a pretty potential protracted so autumn, I should say, of more and more strike action. Yes, I think for, for some time now, we've been talking about the prospect of this being a winter of discontent and that that really does seem to be on the on the way after things in summer haven't exactly been that that good either and um, the, there was some hope yesterday that a new pay offer on the table might actually break the deadlock in the end it didn't do so the unions weren't weren't happy and um, it doesn't seem like the pay offer is necessarily a long way off it sounds like there's a little bit of adjustment needed. Uh, so the Scottish Councils, the Council Umbrella Group, COSLA, did offer a 5% pay rise with a, a commitment that people would get a minimum of an extra £1,925. Um, however, from the union's perspective, it's not the £1,925 they're concerned about, it's the way it's being paid. So if your 5% pay rise isn't £1,925, then the councils will make up the difference through a one-off payment. But the, the unions are pretty concerned that that's a worse deal than council workers in other parts of the UK and England and Wales, uh, because yeah. they're they are simply getting a salary rise of £1,925. So they're not happy at all that workers in Scotland seem to be getting a, a worse deal than workers in the, the rest of the UK. OK, and just very finally and quickly, Michael, if you can, uh, Liz Truss almost certainly likely to be the UK Prime Minister this time next week. What's the view of her in Scotland from a part of the country, it must be said, that wasn't terribly enamoured uh, with Boris Johnson? Well, I think Liz Truss has been having an interesting campaign in terms of Scotland because she has wanted to talk about the, the union quite a lot. She's also wanted to show that she can stand up to Nicola Sturgeon and that she she won't let her have a, an easy time. That's been the mes message to Conservative members. Scottish Conservative membership generally have lapped that up, I would say. They're pretty excited about the, the fact that we'll have a Prime Minister who's not, not scared to say what they think about the Scottish Government, not, not scared to criticise it. You won't be surprised at all to hear, though, that it, it won't probably win her many new votes from SNP or potentially Labour voters in Scotland who really maybe Labour in particular thinking that the way to approach the Scottish Government is to try and work with them a little bit more, to try and move on from the issues of independence, if, if you can. I don't think that's what we're going to see. I think what we're going to see is a, a really confrontational battle over issues of independence and the union, which we're rather used to here in Scotland.